Well, my fondest memories in, in NUS are a couple of things. One is, um, I think, the engagement with uh, all the disciplines in the humanities and the arts. Uh, it was the first time that I was exposed to the liberal arts uh, in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. First time that I got to do philosophy. Uh, first time that you know, I was doing disciplines like political science and economics. And so it was an it, it was a intellectual world that was opened up. And uh, it was stimulating and exciting. The other thing that really excited me was the student life, the friends we made, um, you know, um, the times that we had. And I would say the third thing that I remember is theater. I would do theater even when I was in the university. I was in the Varsity Playhouse. I would, um, yeah, I, would, I was doing plays all the time. And there was always a tension between attending classes and going for tutorials and attending rehearsals and getting up to speed for performance. So yeah, it, it, was, a, it was a wonderful once in a lifetime opportunity and I'm glad I had it. Significant highlights would include the choice that I made to go into journalism. Uh, I opted to, to do writing and journalism because uh, at that time, uh, Singapore was still undergoing a recession and jobs were hard to come by. I actually wanted a career in academia, but it uh, wasn't possible at that time. So I opted to write. And uh, I was lucky enough to have some of that writing picked up by the Straits Times then. Uh, and so the decision to become a writer for the arts was an important highlight in my life. The next milestone, I would say, was when I left journalism and became artistic director of the substation. Uh, Kuo Pao Kun, who was a friend and a mentor at that time, asked me to take over the substation. And that, again, was another wonderful, once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And that was the first time I think I, I was working full-time in the arts. Prior to that, I was always working in the arts after office hours. But once I got to the substation, it was a full-time job. Uh, and the full weight and burden of being an artist became clear to me. The, the third and final highlight was when I moved from the substation uh, to the Intercultural Theatre Institute. Uh, that was in 2000. And I've been there since. I'd rather be doing the arts than anything else in the world. So I'm one of those fortunate people who's doing work which he loves to do. Uh, and for me, the arts are so important because they give me the ballast, the anchor, the strength to live in this world. And I think it was most apparent during the time of the pandemic. The three years when we were isolated and separate and we couldn't connect, it was the arts that, uh, that provided me the consolation, the sucker. I think that is so important to being a human being, just, just, the, just being a human being, you know, to be able to feel, to be able to empathize, to be able to connect to other human beings. And the arts do this all the time. So I have the privilege of working in an area where these things are part of my daily life. And really, it's my honor and privilege. Well, my daughters are in the NUS right now, <laughs> both of them. Uh, and they, listening to them speak about their experiences, uh, watching them read and learn and write, 
I realized that this is not the same course that I went through. Uh, it's much more deeper. The, uh, the opportunities and the um, uh, areas that they are, they are exploring now are much wider. Uh, in fact, the whole, the whole education system that they go through uh, seems to have evolved and I, I think it's gone, it's become better. Uh, better for younger people and I, it's the natural thing to do. I mean, the world that we grew up in, the world that I grew up in is a completely different world. Um, my my uh, honours and master's thesis were typed out on an electric typewriter. Uh, and I, I remember that it was only uh, when I was writing my final draft of my master's thesis that I, had, I was using what we call then uh, a word processor. <laughs> and we had to go to a particular place in NUS, which was a computer room, uh, to write these, uh, these, the thesis on a floppy disk, <laughs> and then transfer it and get it printed. And, and so, you know, I mean, had, uh, uh, had, smartphones didn't exist. Can you imagine that? There was no internet. Uh, that was the world that I was in. And obviously today, it's a completely new, brave new world. And I think the education has to change to keep up with that. I would have, I would have said, do exactly what you did before. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, and um, be, I, I would have taken more chances.